Hello and welcome to this talk on the Big Meadow Search. I'm Laura Moss and I'm here representing the Carmarthenshire Meadows Group. I'm going to be covering the aims of the project, how we got started and designed it, uh, give you some preliminary results from our first year in 2021, uh, go through how the Big Meadow Search fits in with other plant schemes that are in uh, action, uh, how you can get involved and how you can enter your data. Our initial aim was purely to record the plant species that were found in our meadows. But as the project progressed, we thought this was a great opportunity to raise awareness and to increase people's interest and appreciation of the importance of plants. We have also been doing regular social media posts to help with plant identification and also have been highlighting the association of plants with other species, in particular invertebrates. Plant awareness disparity or plant blindness is the tendency for us not to notice plants in our environment. And this leads us to believe that plants are unimportant. Uh, this has been researched by a number of people and has essentially been split into four different uh, characteristics. The first being that people don't generally notice plants in their environment. The second, that there is less uh, care uh, given to plants compared to other uh, species. Um, People don't tend to recognise the importance of plants. And lastly, there's relatively little interest. We're essentially trying to put plants on the map by undertaking the big meadow search. And we're hoping that people will become more aware of them around them in the environment. Big Meadow Search started as an idea amongst the steering group of the Carmarthenshire Meadows Group back in the late spring of 2021. We essentially wanted to discover the range of plants that we had in our land. And rather than doing a quadrat based scientific study, we just wanted to wander around and uh, make a list of what was present. So to do this, we came up with the Big Meadows uh, Search species list. Rather than reinventing the wheel, we based our list on the National Plant Monitoring Scheme Lowland Grassland Indicator Species List. And with the help of our uh, county plant recorder, we added in additional meadow plants of interest. We then asked people to submit their data in Excel format. We initially planned to run the project over two separate weeks, the first to coincide with Wales Nature Week and the second to coincide with the National Meadows Day. Not long before we planned to launch the Big Meadow Search in Carmarthenshire, we decided that we should aim high and extend the project to all of the UK. We also felt that limiting the project to hay meadows was actually very restrictive and uh, limited the number of people that could take part. We wanted to encourage as many uh, different species to be recorded as possible. So as well as the Big Meadow Search species list, we asked for people to add other species that they uh, came across. And rather than running two separate weeks, we decided to run a continuous period ending uh, on the 31st of July. To promote the project and to spread the word, we set up uh, Facebook and Twitter accounts and ran features on uh, various Big Meadow Search plant species with photographs, identification tips, and interesting facts. As time went on, we started to highlight the interactions between the various plants uh, alongside invertebrates, galls and fungi, and highlighted and signposted people to identification resources. This just shows an example of uh, two typical posts that were on Twitter. So a particular species was highlighted with identification features and associated invertebrates. This is how the posts appeared on uh, Facebook and the content was very similar between the two different social media platforms. Our social media posts covered rushes, grasses and sedges. Although our, our initial objective was to collect data, we managed to achieve far more than this. People fed back to us that they had become more aware of local grasslands, not just meadows, but road verges, churchyards, amenity grasslands and woodland rides. There was an increased understanding and appreciation of the importance of plants. There was definitely an improvement in identification skills and people seemed very interested in posts that focused on plant and invertebrate interactions. 
The date of the 2021 hasn't been fully analysed yet, but there were 76 searches covering 14 counties across the UK, with 327 species being recorded and nearly 2,600 individual records. As I mentioned at the start, the Big Meadow Search Species List was made up of uh, two separate uh, plant lists. The National Plant Monitoring Scheme included 98 species and in 2021, 83 of these uh, were recorded. With regards to the extra species of interest that our county recorder added, 44 out of the 61 were uh, reported. 15 of the National Plant Monitoring Scheme lowland grassland indicator species weren't uh, reported in our first year. I put an asterisk by uh, Dropwort and Birdsfoot as there was some identification confusion with these two species. Uh, Dropwort had been uh, misidentified and was actually meadow sweet, and Birdsfoot was getting confused with bird, common Birdsfoot trefoil. Here are some images which show you that Birdsfoot does look very different to common Birdsfoot trefoil. From the list of meadow axiophytes or meadow plants of interest that was suggested from the county plant recorder, 17 of these were not recorded in our first year. As you can see, there were four species of sedge, two species of rush included in this. This map shows the sites that were searched in 2021. And as you can see, uh, these stretched from Newcastle upon Tyne down to Totnes, with the majority of sites being in West Wales, which fits with the campaign having started in Carmarthenshire. Here we can see Wales in more detail. The green lines uh, outline the four territories for the local environmental record centres. And in our first year, most of the records were in the West Wales Biodiversity Information Centre uh, catchment. We learned a few things in our first year, not surprisingly. The first being that our Excel spreadsheet based collection tool wasn't very user friendly or analyst friendly, so that needed to be revised. Uh, we know that there were potential false uh, positives due to misidentifications. And we know that the absence of records doesn't mean that there is an absence of those species. Our project doesn't require routine photo submissions uh, for uh, record verification. But if you compare our project to the Big Garden Bird Watch, the uh, Big Butterfly Count, the Breeding Bird Survey and Wetland Bird Survey, for example, none of these uh, rely on uh, photographic verification. The project also highlighted that many people are uh, lacking in confidence when it comes to the identification of grasses, sedges and rushes. There are a number of botanical recording schemes already up and running in the UK, including the National Plant Monitoring Scheme, the National Plant Monitoring Scheme Plus, which is a pilot launched uh, this year and covering sites such as uh, brownfield and immunity grasslands. Uh, plant life uh, are supporting the rapid grassland assessment methodology and obviously there's a lot of important work being undertaken by vice county plant recorders in making uh, county atlases and flora and there are many volunteers out there doing their own uh, botanical recording. On this slide I've tried to summarise uh, the differences and similarities between the various recording schemes. If we look at the two middle columns for the MPMS and the MPMS Plus, you will see that these are concentrated on one kilometre squares. In the original MPMS system, these were uh, randomised, but in their newer pilot system, there is an element of self-selection allowed. These schemes don't just cover grasslands, they cover a much broader uh, ecological remit. They do uh, appeal to keen individuals, although they do have three levels uh, of difficulty within their scheme to cater for people with different uh, confidence and identification abilities. They require two visits early and late in the summer and require a linear, linear transects and quadrats to be uh, searched. The information is then fed back to the MPMS and is aimed at looking at uh, the longitudinal monitoring of species and it's there to, to track abundance trends. With the rapid grassland assessment, uh, this is done in a different way. You can pick the site of interest, 
but you need to uh, uh, examine the site in a W or grid pattern. And you're looking for grassland indicator species, usually 25 uh, common indicator species are selected. Again, I would say that this appeals to keen individuals rather than uh, beginners. And the system is uh, recommended to be undertaken between May and August on a one to five yearly cycle. And on your W or grid pattern, you need to make at least 10 stops and to note the species that you find in those places. This is looking at a snapshot of plants that are present and you're asked to estimate the percentage cover for each of those indicator species. If we look at the big meadow search, this is very much an opportunistic study. So if you're out and about and you see somewhere and you've got a bit of time on your hands, you can just stop and search where you like. There's no randomised uh, area given to you and there's no um, method in terms of having to walk in a linear fashion or to use a quadrat. We are concentrating on species rich grasslands and no other um, uh, ecological habitats. I would say this is open to anybody as we're very keen to know about common species such as uh, nettle, bramble, foxglove, daisy, easy to identify things as, as much as the rare things. Our project is running between the 1st of June and the 31st of August, and we basically want you to pick your spot, amble along and enjoy what you're doing. The data will come back to us in the first instance and we will analyse um, who's taken part in terms of what parts of the country have been covered, how many species have been seen, the range of species, etc. And once we've finished our analysis, we'll make sure that the data then gets fed back to the local environmental record centre for that individual's uh, um, relevant geographical area. And through the project, we're not only aiming to collect records, as I said earlier, but we're trying to raise awareness in plants and species interactions. This map shows the distribution of the randomly allocated one kilometre squares within the National Plant Monitoring Scheme. The orange squares currently have a volunteer allocated and are active, whilst the blue squares are requiring a volunteer. As you can see, there are parts of the country which uh, are not currently being covered. If we compare the NPMS map with the 2021 BMS uh, results, you can see that certainly in West Wales, there are patches that the NPMS scheme currently doesn't cover where we have managed to collect uh, records. This slide just demonstrates the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats that are faced by the Big Meadow Search project. If we start with the uh, strengths, uh, this is a UK wide project and is open to all, both uh, beginners and uh, skilled botanists are very welcome to take part. It's opportunistic and you can select the sites that you wish to visit. We have a three month search period and you can do as many sites as you wish during that time frame. With regards to weaknesses, there is a body of opinion that that uh, feels citizen science projects are very weak, but I would argue that we are collecting data that wouldn't otherwise be uh, submitted and that even common species are important for us to know about. We don't, as I said earlier, require photographs for record uh, verification, um, but this is true of, of many uh, national recording schemes. With regards to opportunities, uh, there's definitely been uh, an impetus to raise awareness in uh, the importance of plants, to educate and uh, obviously to generate records as we're going along. Threats to the project, um, this is run by volunteers. The only funding we've had is to establish our website. So there is the potential that uh, volunteer effort could fizzle out or that something better comes along to, to take its place. One question that crops up quite frequently is what makes a good quality grassland? So I'll just spend the next couple of slides just talking through uh, grassland quality indicators. When we're talking about grassland quality, there are a number of different things we might be referring to. Is it the number of positive indicator species present? Is it the proportion of positive versus negative indicators? Is it good quality grassland if there are no negative indicators present? Or does good quality mean that there are rare species present in the site? 
The European Union Nature Information System came up with three categories of species that are used as indicator species. The first are diagnostic species, which are concentrated in the habitat in question, but are generally absent or rare in other habitats. And they are good positive indicators of the habitat in question, but they don't have to occur in every location within that habitat. The next is constant species. These are species that are frequently occurring in the habitat of interest, but they may include generalist species that you will find in other ecological habitats. And finally, there are dominant species. So these will uh, cover a high proportion of the habitat and will give it its form and appearance. The National Plant Monitoring Scheme Indicator Species is based on the three categories that I've just mentioned, alongside uh, the British National Vegetative Classification and Peer Review. Positive indicator species indicate that the habitat is in positive condition and is being managed appropriately. Indicator species should be straightforward and easy to interpret. On this slide, you can see three positive indicator species for hay meadows. In the right hand column, you can see the number of invertebrates that are associated with each of these positive plant indicator species. At the bottom of the table, you can see three negative indicator species for hay meadows. This slide demonstrates that negative indicator species can actually be associated with larger numbers of invertebrates. And we mustn't confuse positive and negative habitat indicator status of a plant with their biodiversity value. This slide shows three common species and their associated invertebrates. On the left, we've got creeping buttercup. This has 30 invertebrate species associated with it including eight beetles, seven fly and seven Lepidoptera, Lepidoptera species. Uh, bramble, which we often take for granted, is the larval food plant for at least 66 Lepidoptera species. And this picture shows uh, green hair streak, peach blossom, buff arches and peppered moth. And then the right hand picture shows uh, meadow buttercup. And this is associated with three beetle species, 11 fly, four sawfly, saw two aphid and nine moth species. Here are some images of common nettle on the left, uh, showing the rust fungus, Puccinia urticata, and on the right, um, galls formed by the uh, gall midge, Dacinura urticae. And on the right hand side, uh, again, you can see the uh, rust fungus on the far right, but also there's a list there of the moths and butterfly larvae that make use of uh, nettles. Here we have uh, three more uh, plant associations. On the left hand side, we've got ground ivy and uh, the leaf mine made by Phytomyza glecomy fly. In the middle, we've got navel wort and its uh, specific rust fungus. And on the right hand side, we've got nipple wort and another rust fungus. So we're well underway with the Big Meadow Search in 2022. We started on the 1st of June and we'll be running until the 31st of August. It's running UK wide and we're covering any species rich grassland. So you don't need to find a big hay meadow or a fancy nature reserve. You can look in your local churchyards and road verges and take part in the project. We no longer require um, data to be sent to us in Excel spreadsheet format. We have an online data entry and we are running a daily social media campaign. You can obviously search uh, meadows as our project name implies, but there are many other places that are also included. If you are, however, searching in meadows, these are often um, privately owned. So please make sure you get the landowner's permission. George Peterkin, who, who wrote this excellent book on meadows, has coined the phrase meadows on the margin. So for our project, we've embraced his ideals and we are including areas such as uh, roadside verges and laybys, edges of car parks, uh, hedgerow edges, woodland rides and graveyards as part of our uh, search site uh, list. You don't need to head to a nature reserve to take part in the big meadow search. You can go to your local business park or industrial estate, local laybys and road verges, and even car parks can turn up some interesting uh, species. 
footpaths are all around us and you'd be surprised to see what's growing if you take a close look. Uh, woodland edges are also a good place to take a look as well as churchyards and the edges of your local community sports grounds. Once you've picked your site, you need to know how to undertake a big meadow search. So we recommend that you take a notebook and pen. You might also find a hand lens or a magnifying uh, lens uh, helpful to look at the smaller features. We need to know your location name and at least a six figure grid reference. And it would be helpful for us to know how long you took to do your search and also the rough size of the area. And when you come to the website, you'll see that there are various things that you can select. You then need to get started and just amble around and enjoy your surroundings and see what you see. If, however, you're in a hay meadow, just, just be mindful that uh, if it's going to be cut, not to trample too much. We're interested in all vascular plants, but they don't need to be in flower. So if you can recognise things that have uh, gone over, such as garlic mustard, cow parsley and bluebell, then please do include those. And if you can recognise things before they come into flower, they can be included as well. This, the scheme does include uh, grasses, rushes and sedges, so any of those can be put on your list. Uh, please try and concentrate on what you can identify and don't worry about what you can't. This is very much a glass half full type of scheme. We want you to concentrate on the positives and don't panic and feel overwhelmed if you can't identify everything. Just acknowledge that there are plenty of things out there that you're yet to learn and enjoy it. If you're planning to take lots of photographs to help with your identification, there's a few things to think about. Uh, many uh, phones and cameras will automatically try and focus on the background. So you might find putting your hand or a piece of paper behind the plant will help you get it into focus. As well as concentrating on the plant itself, have a look at the wider surroundings because that can also be helpful when you uh, get back home. Looking at the leaves, you want to be aware that the bottom leaves can look different to the leaves higher up the stem. Look at the tips, the edges and the bases. Both the upper and lower surface can differ, that have different patterns, different textures, etc. And you also want to look how the leaves attach to the stem. For the stem itself, again, it can vary from top to bottom, particularly with regards to hairiness. And you want to be looking at the shape. Is it square? Is it rounded? Does it have wings? And also the texture. The flowers, there's always a tendency to take a picture of a flower front on, but actually side on views and rear views can be very helpful in identification, particularly as the sepals um, are better shown and uh, are often more helpful than the flowers themselves to identify. You need to look things up once you get back home. Uh, these are the reference books I find most helpful. The Black Collins Guide is good as it includes trees, uh, rushes, sedges and grasses. It's uh, illustrations and has lots of keys. The Harrop's Wild Flowers, the green cover at the top, that has lovely photographs and good descriptions of plants and highlights the differences between similar looking species. It's got distribution maps, uh, but it doesn't include grasses, sedges and rushes. On the but bottom, the Blue Collins Guide is another photographic uh, guidebook. Uh, it includes uh, less species, but there are some sedges, rushes and grasses within it. In the middle there is the Rose Wildflower Key, which is very popular. Again, it uses illustrations rather than photographs. Uh, lots of keys inside and is good for descriptions of fruits. And the final book there on the left, uh, Poland's Vegetative Key. This helps you identify anything that's not in flower. Uh, it can be a little bit daunting as a beginner, but it is very useful. Um, there's no photographs, there's just a few line drawings, but it's um, a, a good book to get used to. When trying to identify grasses, it's always helpful to take a look at the ligule, which lies between the uh, leaf blade and the stem and is shown in this photograph. It varies in its uh, shape and size and it's a, very often a useful uh, feature for identification. Look at the leaf and the stem for texture and colour and make sure you look at the upper and lower surface of the leaf as there may be different features. The width of the leaf and the length and the shape of the tip can also be useful. With regards to the flower head, 
take a look at the structure and whether any branches are regular or in whirls. And if it's a spikelet, uh, look to see whether it's flat or round. When the, looking at the flowers itself, it's useful to count the number of flowers if you can, and also look to see if there are any awns which are poking out of the top. When you're trying to identify sedges, it's useful to look at the leaves as the colour on the upper and lower surfaces can vary. And some of the most common species, uh, this feature helps you to identify them quite easily. You also need to look at the shape, width and shape of the leaf tip and also the shape of where the leaf attaches onto the stem. When you're looking at the spikes, take note of the number and position of the male and the female flowers. And also with the bracts, it's useful to look at their position and their relative length and, uh, in relation to the spikes themselves. In 2022, we launched our website and you can see our homepage uh, displaying on the left hand side. And this has been funded jointly by the West Wales Biodiversity Information Centre and Carmarthenshire Meadows Group. The web address is www.bigmeadowsearch.co.uk. I'm just going to talk you through how to submit records to the Big Meadow Search. If you go to the website, you'll see a page called Submit Records and click on this and it will take you to the correct place. When you scroll down on the Submit Records page, you'll come to this section and I'll just walk you through what you need to do. So we need your name. You have the option of including your email address. It would be very helpful for us if you did include it, as if we have any queries, we'll be able to contact you. But your email address won't be passed on to any third parties or used for any other purposes. We need to know the date that you did your search. We need to know your location name and also a grid reference, ideally six uh, figures or more. If it's possible, if you could give us an idea for how long you spent searching and also if you could tell us the size of the area you searched, that would be useful. It doesn't have to be very precise. Just let us know if you think it's smaller than a tennis court, about the size of a football pitch or larger than a football pitch, and that would be useful uh, information. And then we need to know the type of area that you searched. Was it a hay meadow or flower rich meadow? Was it a different type of field? Was it a road verge, an amenity grassland, woodland ride, a churchyard, a wild garden? Or was it another site that's not mentioned in this list? The next section is the big meadow search species list. And you can sort this according to common name or by scientific name by clicking on this button. The list shows in blue and green with the uh, blue species representing the National Plant Monitoring Scheme uh, indicator species and this green uh, highlighted species are those from the county recorder. You just need to use this scroll bar to work through from A to Z. Once you've done the tick list part of the page, you'll come to this section where you can type in any additional species. When you start typing, the computer will give you suggestions and if you click on those, it will auto populate the box. Once you've filled in this part, you're very welcome to add any other comments about your experience or about the site. Any feedback would be much appreciated. And then once you've completed these boxes, you just need to tick the box to say that you're happy with our privacy policy. The data, as I mentioned earlier, will be analysed by us in the first instance and then we'll send your records to the relevant local environmental record centre. There are various ways you can help us with the Big Meadow search. You can obviously get out and about, do your searches and enter your data. If you can follow us on social media, like and share our posts, then that would be very much appreciated. Please feel welcome to include your uh, searches on the social media platforms. And if you can spread the word to family, friends and community groups, that would be very much appreciated. If you'd like a copy of our flyer, then this can be emailed to you or we can post out printed versions. As I mentioned, the Big Meadow Search records will eventually be sent to the relevant local environmental record centre. I thought it might be helpful to show you the type of information that these record centres keep. 
So if we look at a common species such as the common nettle, this map shows the total number of records for common nettle in Carmarthenshire. And as you can see across the area which has a blue boundary, common nettle has been found far and wide and there are 6,853 records available. You may wonder whether it's worthwhile collecting records of very common species, but if you look at the map on the bottom right, you'll see that in 2019, we only actually had 12 records of common nettle submitted. So it is helpful for us to know not only the rare species and the exciting species, but also those things that we very much take for granted on a day-to-day -day basis. This is a, a similar um, map from the Botanical Society of the British Isles, where the green dots show records that have been made from 2020 onwards and the red dots between 2010 and 2019. And this map also shows the distribution for common nettle records. And you'll see that in West Wales, there have been very few records submitted to the BSBI since 2019. If we look at another common species, creeping thistle, again looking at Carmarthen shears, so the boundary there is marked in blue, you'll see that there's a total of 3,233 records with quite a broad distribution across the county. If you look into the database, however, for a specific year, for example, in this case 2020, creeping thistle records uh, have not been submitted. We know that there will be various forms of recording bias within the Big Meadow Search project. We're only recording presence data and we're not making any assumptions about absence of species based on records. We're not using any quadrat or transect based methodologies. So this is very much a citizen science project open to all. As the years pass, obviously we hope more people will get involved, we'll have more sites searched, so hopefully the number of records will increase significantly over time. There will be certain parts of the country where it's much harder to get records if places are hard to access and the geography is challenging. We very much hope to increase the number of participants and the UK coverage for the Big Meadow Search project from this year forward. We've recently added a page to the website with a list of identification resources, which include cribs, uh, webinars and useful photographic galleries. And there's a possibility that we might be able to convert some of our social media posts which highlight vegetative identification features and plant invertebrate associates into a printed format. I appreciate that social media isn't everybody's cup of tea, but if you would like to take a quick look at what we've been doing, you can go to our website and click on the blue boxes at the bottom of the home page and take a look at our Facebook or Twitter accounts. By doing this, you don't need to download any apps and you don't need a user account. You can just click the link and just go straight to the pages. Thank you for listening to the presentation. I hope you found it interesting and now feel that you want to get out and about and join us with Big Meadow Search. If you've got any questions, then please do not hesitate to contact us via email and feel free to add your searches onto our social media platforms. Many thanks. Bye.